It is often said that just because you're a great player, it does not mean you are a great manager. There are few exceptions to this rule, such as Pep Guardiola, Brian Clough, Zinedine Zidane, and of course, Johan Cruyff. After completing a glittering playing career, Johan Cruyff would enter a managerial career, guiding two of his old clubs, first Ajax, and then Barcelona. At Barcelona, he would help create one of the greatest sides European football has ever seen, and change the identity of the club forever. Without him, Barcelona would be a far cry from the club we know to the mass today. This is the story of Johan Cruyff's Barcelona Dream Team. Johan Cruyff finished his playing career in style, playing for a solitary season at Feyenoord, who he helped win a league and cup double in 1984. It was the end of one of the greatest playing careers ever seen, but Cruyff was not done with the game by any means. Cruyff followed in the footsteps of his mentor, Rinus Mikels, in entering management, and would take the total football baton off him and apply it to his own managerial career. Cruyff had a superb footballing brain, adhering to the policy as every outfield player could cover every position on the pitch, as well as having a strong youth policy. His coaching career began back at his boyhood club of Ajax, and he helped the likes of Frank Reichardt, Dennis Bergkamp and Marco van Basten come through the ranks. He also had the likes of Ronald Koeman, Danny Blind and Arnold Muren in his side. His strongly attacking team saw them score 120 goals in the league in his first season in charge, but they would finish runners-up to PSV in the league. They made amends by defeating RBC 3-0 in the final of the KNVB Cup. They retained this trophy the next season, and Cruyff also guided them to victory over Lokomotiv Leipzig in the final of the Cup Winners' Cup. The side's first major European honour since 1973, when Cruyff captained Ajax to glory in the European Cup final. Cruyff's time as Ajax manager ended soon after, with him returning to Catalonia to take charge of another of his former clubs, Barcelona. He rejoined them, saying he was smarter than he was when he was there as a player, and made mistakes back then he would not make again. He pointed out the club needed change, and that to achieve that, they had to change history. Barcelona at the time were a club in crisis, in debt, and since Cruyff had helped them win the league as a player in 1974, they had only won a solitary top-flight title since. They had recently been involved in a scandal too, with club president Josep Nunes facing a mutiny from the squad over his running after the club the previous season. Nunes appointed Cruyff with the aim of tidying up the club and bringing them back to the top. The changes would immediately be brought in. Cruyff put forth his attacking, fluid possession-based style, and enforced this in all levels of the club's La Masia Academy too, so that it would be easy for players coming through the ranks to transition into the first team. In Cruyff's first campaign, a total of 21 players left, with 13 coming in through the door. His methods quickly brought success, with them finishing second in the league and defeating Sampdoria in the final of the Cup Winners' Cup. The next campaign, he brought in further recruitments to build his team, in the form of Ronald Koeman and Michael Laudrup, who would become staples of the team in the years to come. Despite being a defender, Koeman would become the club's joint top scorer that campaign with 18 goals, thanks to his incredible set-piece ability. Cruyff added a further trophy to the cabinet in the form of the Copa del Rey. They finished the league campaign in third. Cruyff had certainly helped steady the Catalan ship, but the league title was still something that eluded him as a manager. He hoped that the next campaign would see this change. Bulgarian forward Haristo Stoichkov was signed from CSK Sofia, who would turn out to be a signing that truly changed things. Around this time, a young midfielder by the name of Pep Guardiola was also rising through the ranks. Stoichkov would net 22 goals in all competitions. Barcelona won the league 10 points ahead of second place Atletico Madrid. Cruyff himself would be absent for a lengthy period as he had to undergo open heart surgery owing to his years of smoking, but the system he had set up finally took Barcelona back to the top and their first league title in seven years. They would also reach the Cup Winners' Cup final, but Alex Ferguson's Manchester United won 2 1, with Mark Hughes haunting his former side with a brace. The league title, though, was the dawn of a dynasty that would sweep up the trophies in the early 90s. This team Cruyff had built was his football philosophy in its truest form. The fluidity and possession proved key in success. His possession focused on a triangular-based system, wherein the player who had the ball had to position themselves 
so that there are two separate passing options available. The constant movement of the ball between players aimed to create holes by drawing opposition players out of their position, and Barcelona would exploit the gaps. By having attacking fullbacks, this allowed the wide forwards to go central and overload the opposing defence, as well as creating more passing options for the midfielders. Michael Laudrup would often be deployed as a false nine in the style of Nando Hidaguti to draw the opposing centre-backs out of position and generate space for the other forwards. In defence, their system would change from 4-3-3 to 3-4-3, with Guardiola dropping deep to help the defence and Koeman operated as a libero in the style of Franz Beckenbauer to restart the attack when the ball was claimed. His methods truly fed through to Guardiola's managerial career, who constantly used triangular play and a false number nine in the form of Lionel Messi when he took charge of Barcelona. And the use of offensive fullbacks has also been a key part of Guardiola's systems, as well as Jurgen Klopp's. Cruyff's dream team may not have been the first to deploy total football, but there certainly were the sides who mastered it. The La Liga title was a huge mountain for the club to climb, but it was one they had successfully climbed before. One they had not was winning the European Cup. Whilst their rivals the Real Madrid had by then won six of them, Barcelona were yet to lift the famous trophy. Twice they had reached the final, losing to Eusebio's Benfica in 1961, and Terry Venables guided them to a second final in 1986, but they were defeated by Stal Bucharest on penalties. Cruyff, a three-time European Cup winner, hoped he could show the club how it felt to be kings of Europe. Barcelona won the league on the final day, with Real Madrid slipping against Tenerife to allow the Catalans to seal a second consecutive title. They had a chance to make a date with Paradise as well. Barcelona would reach the European Cup final, where they faced Sampdoria at Wembley. With neither side having won the competition before, it was a chance to make history. Before the match, Croy simply sold his players to go out there and enjoy it. Under the London skies, with 25,000 Barcelona fans in attendance, the game was tight, going to extra time after neither side could break through. But in the 111th minute, Eusebio Sacristan was brought down on the edge of the Sampdoria box and Barcelona were awarded with a free kick. Ronald Koeman took it and curled the ball in majestically to give Barcelona the lead. The goal was enough and Barcelona held on to finally win the famous trophy for the first time. Cruyff had taken the club to heights not seen before and became the third man to join the small club of those who have won the European Cup as both a player and a manager. One million people lined the streets of Barcelona to welcome them home, as finally a team other than Real Madrid in Spain were champions of Europe. The 92-93 campaign had a sense of deja vu, as Real Madrid led the table on the final day again and as the season before, the facing Tenerife. Once more, the Islanders did Barcelona a favour, defeating Los Banclos 2-0, and a Haristo Stoichkov goal secured victory for Barcelona against Real Sociedad to ensure a third consecutive league title. A three-peat was another thing that Barcelona had not achieved before. Another star was brought in to strengthen the attacking output in the form of Brazilian forward Romario. He would score a hat-trick on his La Liga debut and won further love from Barcelona, when he got another hat-trick and an incredible 5-0 win over Real Madrid in the league. Barcelona won their fourth consecutive league title in 1994 and also had a chance to win a European Cup for a second time. Cruyff was up against an AC Milan side managed by Fabio Capello. The Rossonieri had won two consecutive European crowns under Arrigo Sacchi, who was heavily influenced by Cruyff, and the legacy Sacchi left behind were gone to haunt Cruyff. Capello's AC Milan ran riot, winning by four goals to nil in Athens. Sadly, the dream team had reached its summit, as Barcelona would surrender their La Liga crown in 1995 and did not win any major trophies the next season. Cruyff tried to regenerate the team, but taking Stoichkov and Koeman out of his side drew controversy, and he eventually fell out with club president Nunes. After suffering from a heart attack, Cruyff's advisors suggested he leave, which he would do in 1996. It was Cruyff's last major role in management, with him only taking charge of the Catalonia national team for a period afterwards. He returned to Barcelona as an advisor to club president Juan Laporta, and suggested they appoint Frank Rijkaard as manager. The former midfielder guided Barcelona to consecutive league titles and a second Champions League, and after he departed, Cruyff suggested another of his former players in Pep Guardiola. Pep, hugely influenced by Cruyff, guided Barcelona to three league titles, two Copa del Reyes, and two Champions Leagues during his time in charge, 
building a team based largely around Youth Academy graduates and possession based play, mastering the lessons that Cruyff had taught him. Guardiola, though, had gone on to say the dream team he played for was superior than the Barcelona team he managed, and this side would not have been possible without Cruyff's influence. Johan Cruyff had perhaps the greatest mind in footballing history, and that is why he so seamlessly transitioned from playing into management. Through what the game taught him, he turned Barcelona into one of the greatest clubs in the world, went on to bring incredible talents such as Xavi, Iniesta, Carlos Poyol, Sergio Busquets and Lionel Messi through the ranks, and become the best team in the world. Without Cruyff, Barcelona's chaos may have continued, and they may never have become champions of Europe. The dream team changed European football forever. Barcelona announced themselves against the might of Real Madrid and became an almost unstoppable force. In the 78 years before Johan Cruyff's time as Barcelona manager, the club had won 42 trophies. In the 30 years after Cruyff took charge, they won 50 trophies. His legacy in Catalonia is immortal, as he truly turned Barcelona into the footballing giants we know them as today. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on the AFC Finners channel. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please have a look at the channel down below and check out the hundreds of videos available. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, you can do so in the link below for as little as £1 a month. Please let me know what you thought of this video and what topic you'd like me to cover next. See you next time.